Happy 2022, friends. Thanks so much for taking the time to gather with us online today. I just had a question. I wonder, are you, as you think about the new year, are you a resolution, setting goals type of person? Or are you more of a, I don't really do that. I'm just gonna kind of let things go as they go. So just kind of put in the comments below, what are you? Are you a resolution person? Are you just kind of a go with the flow, whatever happens, happens type of person? Just before I get to the message, I just have a couple of announcements that I wanna highlight this morning. Uh, the first one is, is that we have life groups that are beginning next week. I'm so excited to be having life groups. Um, and I just really encourage you to join a life group today. If you need more information or you wanna fill out our survey, to just kind of let us know which type of life group best fits you at this time. I go on our website and follow the link and fill out the survey and join a life group today. Also, I just want to let you know about our REACH program. Now, there's going to be some slight changes right now to our REACH program. The Thursday nights is not going to happen until uh, schools reopen for in-person learning. But Pastor Sarah is working very hard to have a, a REACH program on Sunday mornings. This is for students grades six to eight, and it's gonna be every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at the Life Center. Also, we have something called Rooted, which is for students grades eight to 12, and that's gonna be happening starting on Fridays um, at 7.30 every Friday night. So hopefully, if you have some students in your life, let, let them know to check out Reach on Sunday mornings and Rooted on Friday nights. Well, we are starting a new series. It's a new year, new series called Life with Jesus. And what we're going to be doing for the next eight weeks is we're going to be exploring the book of Colossians. Also, to kind of go along with this is, is going to be our life groups like I talked about before. And these are going to be a chance for us to gather together in homes or online and really look and break down what Colossians is talking about. So we're going to be talking about Colossians on Sunday, and we're also going to be exploring Colossians in our life groups. So we're really going to have a great understanding of what Paul is talking about in Colossians. The main idea that we really want to kind of highlight in really look at over these net next eight weeks is that Paul is sharing with the Coloss church what it really looks like to have life with Jesus. And that is what we're going to be looking at over these eight weeks. I want to kind of start with this, this article that I came across. And the article is entitled, The Power of Faith. NFL star Kurt Warner Hope's American underdog movie shows circumstances don't define you. Kurt Warner uh, quoted and said that this movie that came out, it's called American Underdog, is to inspire people to dream of becoming better and achieving more. Kurt Warner's story is a story about walking through the wilderness, about going through hard times, before he made it big in the NFL. In fact, as he was trying to make it into the NFL, he, he, was, he kept getting cut by teams. He, he couldn't make it in the NFL. And he ends up working in a grocery store as a stock boy. So NFL is just not working out. He goes and he, he needs to pay the bills. He needs to um, get food on the table for his family. He's working as a stock boy in a grocery store. But then there's a team that takes a chance on him, the Rams. And he joins their team and he ends up leading them to a Super Bowl. And he actually becomes the Super Bowl MVP. And eventually his NFL career takes him into the Hall of Fame. This movie, American Underdog, actually uh, came out December 25th, right on Christmas Day 2021. And Kurt Warner said that this movie really comes at a time when people need to be encouraged. People need to see real life 
and to let you know that your circumstances don't need to define you. He said something very interesting at the, at the end of this article. And, and he put it this way. He says that everyone has their grocery store moment. Everyone has their grocery store moment. And I was thinking about it. It's those times when you think in your life. You look maybe at your own circumstances and you go, is this it? Have I achieved everything that I want to achieve? Is this all there is to my life? Or could there be more to my life? Colossians is, is for us as, as those that would call themselves followers of Jesus to think about what could my life look like with Jesus. Or maybe for some of you watching right now, you are asking, and you're not even, not even there yet, you maybe are asking the question, today, I want to start my life with Jesus. Today, we're going to look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, the first 14 verses of Colossians chapter 1. This is what it says. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will, and Timothy, our brother. To the saints in Christ at Coloss, who are faithful brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the, of the love you have for all the saints. Because of the hope reserved for you in heaven, you have already heard about this hope in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. It is bearing fruit and growing all over the world, just as it has among you since the day you heard it and came to truly appreciate God's grace. You learn this from Ephrath, our dearly loved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has told us about your love in the Spirit. For this reason also, since the day we heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the saints' inheritance in the light. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. In Him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Paul begins Colossians chapter 1, letting the audience know that he is an apostle. An apostle is one of the spiritual gifts given to the church and these type of people are your visionary people they they like to build churches they're church planters this was paul's job he's letting them know this is how i define myself as an apostle he's letting us know that he is friends with timothy in fact the relationship that he had with timothy is he he mentored this young pastor he's letting us know that he's writing this letter to to those that are are christians followers of Jesus in Coloss. He refers to them as, as saints. Saints is just a word that's, that Paul is trying to say they are set apart for God. They are fully devoted to God. And then he reminds them that they are in Christ. That is who they belong to. They belong to Jesus. Paul here in, in these verses has a great desire for the Colossians, to grow into full Christian maturity, to become more like Jesus. So maybe you're asking, how, how will this happen? What is Paul letting us know how this is supposed to happen? Well, the first thing that he talks about is faith in Jesus. Paul is letting the church in Coloss know that he is regularly praying for them. This would have been such a morale boost to those in the Coloss church. 
to know that there was somebody that was praying for them every single day, earnestly praying for them. Maybe in yourself, you can think about who, who do you think are some of the people that are praying for you? Who are those people that, that are regularly praying for you? Let that be a morale boost to you. To know that you have people that are praying for you. Paul is, is talking about that. That a faith in Jesus, that involves trust. That, that when you don't know what's going on, you don't know what the, the end result is, you put your trust in Jesus. There's a level of commitment that this, this means. That you are saying, I, I am fully committed to you, Jesus. I, I trust you. I, I believe in what you say. I am following you. And then a faith in Jesus gives us certainty that, that no matter the outcome, that we know that Jesus is doing this for our good, that he has great plans for us, that he wants to see us succeed and prosper. We can have a certainty in that. There's a guy named N.T. Wright, and, and he wrote this commentary on Colossians, and this is what he says. Belief, if genuine, is more than just mental assent to truth. See, faith needs to go beyond just knowing the facts. But it's putting our belief and our trust in Jesus and knowing that that, that, is, that we can be confident that that is the right person to put our trust into. Paul is, is recognizing that this is a fairly young church. It hasn't been established very long, but, but there is amazing things that are happening even in, even though this is just a young church. See, people are going around and they're sharing the good news to people in Colos. They are getting the message out there to the people. And they're hearing the good news. And I wonder, at this time, as we think about coming into 2022, are, are people here in Kapuskasing, are they hearing the good news? Are we telling people the good news. Paul mentions this guy named Ephra. And I had to do a little bit of study because I didn't really know too much about this guy. And, and, and I found out that, that he was originally from Colos. Colos was his hometown. And he was the guy that was responsible for starting this church. He was, he was part of planting this church in Colos. It says also that he was imprisoned in Rome. At this time in Colossus, it was still under Roman authority. And he was eventually imprisoned in Rome. And then he was martyred in Colossus, which means he was killed. And the reason why was that he faithfully followed Jesus to the very end. And this cost him his life. See, my friends, of Faith in Jesus, we see this, this idea of, of prayer, that, that we have this level of commitment where we begin to go to Jesus when we don't understand or when we have situations in our life. We're trying to figure out what is my life all about? What plans do you have that we go to Jesus? There is a commitment where we say, Jesus, I give you my life. I give you everything. Take full control of everything in my life. And then when we have this faith in Jesus, it compels us to go and share the good news to everyone. We want them to know about the Jesus that we know. So this is the first thing that Paul talks about, is faith in Jesus. The second thing is that we need to think like Jesus. Colossians 1 verse 9 in the message translation says this, to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will. See, when we think about thinking like Jesus, what this involves here is, is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. When we think about knowledge, 
and I never really thought about this, but knowledge involves holiness and thanksgiving. See, when we have a knowledge of who Jesus is, there's this holiness, there's this set apart that, that we want to live differently. And when we have a knowledge of who Jesus is, this should just have gratitude just pouring out of us. This knowledge of Jesus. See, it's not just about insights into how God wants us to behave. But it is understanding of God's saving purpose in Jesus. It's seeing the bigger picture. What Jesus did for us. He saved us. The purposes that Jesus had when he came to this earth. This is a looking at knowledge. Wisdom is mental excellence. This is when we can say that we don't have all the answers, but we go to someone who does. We go to Jesus and we say, I don't understand. I need your help. I'm trying to figure out this. He will give us wisdom. And it's this mental excellence. It's like it's the highest excellence. It's the highest level of intellect to get wisdom from Jesus. And then we have understanding. And this is the ability to think through a subject coherently and clearly. You know when you have those moments when it seems a little fuzzy. You don't have all the details. You don't really understand. Maybe even Jesus asks you to do something and, and you don't, he doesn't give you the full picture. But it's this understanding that we go to Jesus and say, I don't know the full plan. I don't know what's happening. I need your help. I, I'm really wrestling through something right now. Can you help me to understand? Can you help me to know what I should do next? That's what thinking like Jesus is. Knowledge wisdom, understanding. C.S. Lewis, in, in one of his, his famous books called Mere Christianity, says this, to have faith in Christ means, of course, trying to do all that he says. There would be no sense in saying you trusted a person if you would not take his advice. Thus, if you have really handed yourself over to him, it must be follow that you are trying to obey him but trying in a new way a less worried way not doing those things in order to be saved but because he has begun to save you already friends if we want to think like jesus then we need to heed his advice that we need to get knowledge from jesus we need to look to him for wisdom and look to him for understanding. That's how we begin to think like Jesus. The third thing is, is that we need to walk like Jesus. Colossians 1 verse 10 in the, the ESV version says this, Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. What this is talking about, what Paul is trying to say here is this is a pattern of life that there needs to be a standard there needs to be someone that you are trying to emulate and jesus is a great person to emulate that this needs to be the standard of when people look at us that they see jesus in our life colossians 1 verse 10 continues fully pleasing to him whoa this is a big one that paul is asking us here to please him in everyday life, in every situation. You know, you might be thinking that this seems like it's an impossible ideal. But see, Paul is, is trying to let us know that if we understand ourselves as God's new creation, if we begin to see ourselves as people that are emulating Jesus, that we want to walk like Jesus, look like Jesus, talk like Jesus, that this is going to be something that we are going to just want to do. That we are going to, with our actions, with our decisions, with everything that we do, that we want to walk 
like Jesus. See, Christian living is, is about knowing God. There's activity here where you have a knowledge of who God is and then there's an obeying God. There's a devotion here. There's a, God, I want to do what you want me to do. I want to follow your plan for my life. Colossians 1 verse 11 says this, being strengthened with all power so that you may have great endurance and patience. See, Paul, back to this impossible ideal, knows that it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to take patience and endurance and that God's strength and power will enable us, will give us the patience and the endurance that we need to continue to walk like Jesus. See, it's not just a one-time decision. Maybe a lot of you have thought that, that I, I made that decision. I, I went forward. I said, Jesus, I give you my life. And, and you thought that's all you needed to do. But Paul is saying that's not enough. It needs to be more. It needs to be an everyday decision that you are going to walk like Jesus. We also understand that part of our world, part of what we live in, that sometimes there's moments of crisis and panic. Yeah, maybe you're feeling it right now. Crisis and panic. And Paul says in those moments that if you are walking like Jesus, to joyfully give thanks. Joyfully give thanks? In the moments of crisis and panic, are you, are you, what? I can't do that. Oh, but we need to joyfully give thanks. And I wonder, are you joyful? When you give thanks to God, do you do it out of, I guess I should thank God for what he's done for me. But is there joy that comes into your life that, that flows through you when you are giving thanks? Do you take time to regularly give thanks to God for what he's done for you? This is what Paul is saying, that we need to give thanks joyfully. See, this is a time for us to pause, to take some, some moments to remember those things that God has done for you and that God will continue to do in your life. Colossians 1 verse 11 says this, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. See, this darkness, we were held as a prisoner. Jesus came and he rescued us from that. That's exciting. We were rescued from darkness. Paul talks about a new kingdom. He mentions this idea of a new kingdom and he will bring this up again as we read through Colossians. But see, Jesus, this new kingdom is possible because of Jesus' death on the cross and eventually his resurrection from the dead. Jesus is the beloved son. This is the king who we should be following. We no longer need to follow the prince of darkness, but we can follow the king. Colossians 1 verse 14 tells us that in him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. See, redemption is just a nice word to say that we were purchased from captivity. What's the captivity? The sin. Jesus gave us forgiveness of sin. He he wants to eventually rid the world of evil entirely. And in that, it needs to start with each one of us. When we come before Jesus and say, I accept your salvation. Please forgive me. And we begin to walk like Jesus. We are starting to begin to rid the world of evil. But it needs to start with one, each of us. It needs to start with you and me. We need to begin to walk like Jesus. He needs to become the standard that you are following. We need to be knowing and obeying God. We need to do this daily. 
walking like Jesus. We need to remember what God has done for us, what he did on the cross for us, and we need to follow the king. We need to follow Jesus. So, something to think about, to have some conversation later. Maybe you're going to gather with some friends or with your family, or, or, or maybe you just want to go and, and have a conversation with God and begin to, to dialogue and ask these questions. How is my faith in Jesus? Am I trusting him wholly? Am I put my complete trust in Jesus? Or am I holding something back? Do I seek Jesus for wisdom when I have need answers, when I don't know what to do, when I'm trying to figure out a problem or looking at the world and just not understanding? Do we go to Jesus and seek him out for wisdom? And what about, do you look like Jesus? Do you walk like Jesus? Do you talk like Jesus? Would your friends and family your neighbors, would they agree that, yes, you are definitely a follower of Jesus? Those are some things that, that you should have a conversation about to really dig into and, and ask yourself these hard questions. Before we go, let me just have the honor to pray with you. Lord, I pray for anybody that's watching right now. Lord, I pray that, that if they are not living a life with Jesus, I pray that they would make that decision today. That they would say, today is the day that I want to live with Jesus. I want to surrender to him my life. I ask that he would forgive me of my sin and come into my life, take full control. And I want to start to live the life that Jesus has. And maybe for the rest of us that are would say that we are followers of Jesus. I pray that today that we would ask ourselves these questions. What does my faith in Jesus look like? Has my faith in Jesus taken a beating lately? Am I really putting my full trust in Jesus? Or that, that if there's something going on in their life, are they looking to you, Jesus, for wisdom? Are they having the mindset to think like you, Jesus? I pray that, that they would look to you for wisdom. And I pray, Lord, if, if they are not walking like you, that they would be reminded of what you did for them on the cross. That you rose from the dead as well. And that you are alive and well. And, and we need to be modeling our lives after you. You need to be the standard that we are following. And I pray that they would walk like you. So Lord, as we begin this, this series today, Life with Jesus, I pray that, that everyone watching would either be a gut check time, that there is things in my life that I need to change and be more like Jesus, or that I need today to start to live my life with Jesus. And I ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join with us online. Don't forget, please get yourself into a life group to get to gather with people, whether online or in person, and so that you can really wrestle through some of these things that we talked about today and that you can gather together with a community of people. I pray that, that you would worship Jesus. I pray that, that you would, would earnestly follow Jesus. I pray that you would share Jesus with everyone that you meet, and that you would lead others to Jesus.